How do you use uh, AI in your own life? What, what kind of things do you do personally and professionally with AI? Uh, AI definitely is part of my everyday use. Um, I use it for research. I use it for establishing outlines. Uh, I use it for getting information, uh, for helping to check some of my kids' homework. <laughs> I, I just think it's a, an incredible tool for efficiency. It's probably saved me from hiring a whole staff member uh, under my organization because it's it's made me so efficient as a person. It has incredible, incredible uh, applications for education, especially in the areas where students have gaps. And and individualizing, hyper individualizing, if you will, um, reading and mathematics skills that our students so desperately need. So I'm a huge advocate of using it responsibly in education as well. What about in the Donald's household? How do you guys use it at home? Oh, my husband sends me every contract that he has to look at and says, run this through your AI agents and tell me what changes should be made. But I'm a CPA also by trade, but yeah. um, I use it a lot for uh, that kind of thing. And uh, ideas, you know, finding information. I, I can't imagine people who don't use it. I said, I tell people the day that you use AI is the first day you will use it every single day from then on. And yeah. I'm, I'm just a big evangelist when it comes to AI and helping make our lives easier. I am too, but I have to say, I, I ask almost every guest on the show about it. And we have tons of people who come on who say they're not really using it. So I'm with you. Well, I'll, I'll help. Uh, I'll help uh, evangelize it. Um, here's what I was researching while you were answering, but I was listening too because I can multitask. Um, and this is my big education idea. I've got others, but this is the one I've, I'm most into right now. Uh, you know what state pays its teachers the most, and how much? Public school teachers? Any idea? I don't mean to put you on the spot. I would say New York, probably. Yeah, California, one hundred one thousand. Mississippi is last, fifty three thousand. But second to last is your state of Florida. $54,000 a year. Uh, and I know a teacher who lives there, and I can confirm. Uh, here's my idea. Some governor, maybe Ron DeSantis of the free state of Florida, some governor should should pay teachers double the state that pays the most. You'd have to come up with money, but it's not that much money. So Florida should say, okay, California is 100. We're going to do 200000 a year. Because to me, one of the big problems in education is it's hard to get good public school teachers. They're paying off the supplies out of their own pocket, and they're making, in, in your state, $54,000 a year. If you paid them two hundred, dollars imagine the people who'd want to teach public school in Florida. What better uh, uh, way to help public school kids than to attract a class of people who, who do it for $200,000 a year and, you know, put a tax on whatever, oil or, I don't care, cigarettes or gum Whatever. What do you think of my idea for one state to do it? And then other states to compete for good teachers would have to do it too. What do you think of my idea? Well, our starting salaries have made a lot of progress. Governor DeSantis led that effort. However, I think as a taxpayer and a parent, I would pay a great teacher $200,000 a year. I don't believe in across the board teacher increases. Unfortunately, as much as I appreciate the work that teachers do, we still have only about half of our students who are reading and doing math proficiently, and we need better quality teachers, and we need to be able to reward them. As you know, I served on the school board. I fought the unions in my very red district who just refused to allow us to reward good teachers and to pay people more for the more difficult positions. I think we do what, exactly what you're talking about, but through free market and school choice and not necessarily a mandate from above that is going to give across the board reasons because we've seen that happen and it not result in better student outcomes, unfortunately. Right. Well, let me let me make my plan clear. I don't want to pay the crappy teachers there now 200000 I want to I want to figure out who's a good teacher, however that can be done. And, you know, the teachers union acts like they're a different category of species. In, in my company, in any yeah. place you've ever worked, we know who the good employees are and who the bad ones are, and the bad ones aren't there any longer, right? That's the way yeah. a normal place works. So let's get rid of the bad teachers, but let's pay the good ones 200000 Let's find new ones who, I mean, again, you and I both know there are tons of people who would not consider being a public school teacher for $54,000 a year, but if it were 200000 they would. So I'm for attracting great teachers. And, and, and I, think, I think it's just obvious. You can't attract great teachers at the level we need to if you're paying them $54,000 a year. If you're paying them two hundred, dollars you can. 100%, so, Mark. And yeah. here's my idea to add to yours yeah. is the uberfication of teaching. 
to allow professionals and people who are passionate about totally. children and passionate about their subject area to be able to teach one course without jumping right. through a bunch of certification hoops and having to be there full time. But why we have a gig economy for so many other things, all different types of professions, not just Uber drivers, but totally. even professorships. Why shouldn't great people be able to teach a course and provide their expertise to mm -hmm. students in that way as well? Totally. And to linger on my idea one more moment and then I'll move on. Imagine uh, that state, right? Let's say uh, Montana did it. You know, fewer schools, 100, 200,000 a year in Montana. That you'd be living like a king or a queen. And then all the great people who wanted to be teachers would come to Montana. They'd have to prove that they were great. They'd be making 200,000. And then, so then the people in South Dakota would say, well, we can't get any teachers here because all the good people are going to Montana where they're making 200 grand. We got to pay 200 grand, or maybe we got to pay 210 grand. I, I get I get the challenges of coming up with the money, et cetera. But again, I just say, what better use of our tax dollars could there possibly be than attracting the best people to be teachers in our public schools? A thousand percent. I do have to say, though, and you said Mississippi was last, but the the state with the biggest increase in literacy in the past NAEP, in the past 10 years is Mississippi. Yeah. So it's not the golden, you know, it's not the silver bullet necessarily of what you pay your teachers, but implementing science of reading, accountability measures, a lot of the reforms that Mississippi, for example, has put in place that California has not have actually resulted in great results for well, kids academically. 100%. But I will point out, of course, that uh, if $54,000 in a lot of parts of Mississippi, you can live like a king or a queen. And whereas, Florida. Whereas whereas the publics in Tampa, uh, you, you, you'd go broke in two weeks with $54,000 shopping at the Publix if you got the sushi, I would say. <laughs> um, That's right. you've, you, you talk a lot about the, the Department of Education, the president's plan to get rid of it. I've never been consumed with this. It's such a small portion of the federal budget. Pat Cannon used to talk about the uh, uh, bureaucrats and sandals and beads at the Department of Education. I just think it's all nonsense. We don't we don't need it. We don't need them. Uh, the Democrats and their allies and the dominant media try to turn it into, you know, uh, oh, you don't care about education if you want if you want to abolish it. It's ridiculous. It's not that much money. Uh, most people and you saw this with George W. Bush with No Child Left Behind. Most people don't want Washington to dictate uh, what what the states and the local schools do. And some people don't even want the governors to do it. But I'm a big believer in governors and education because uh, whether you're in a small state or a big state, governors have to be uh, closer to the ground and saying, what's our state policy? What are the rules for our state, our, our universities, et cetera? So I'm, I'm for local, but I think governors should play a massive role and, uh, and, and, the, and the Washington should not. So in the gubernatorial level, and again, you've got a governor who's been extremely active on these issues in Florida. What are the things a governor should do, regardless of the state, to improve the public education system in their state? What are like the basics you would urge a governor to do today to improve it? Well, the first thing is universal formula funded school choice. That means that the money follows the child. The district schools, if they lose the child, they lose the money that goes with it. So you make sure you have those competitive pressures. Every parent has the funding that they need to direct it where they want their children to attend school or some combination of modular schooling. That's of utmost importance. Paycheck protection, I mentioned what we um, passed earlier, where unions have to go out and collect their own dues. The taxpayers shouldn't be doing that. And then science of reading. We have to train our teachers better. For decades, in fact, an entire generation, we have been training them incorrectly in ways that we know do not work. It's been proven in many states. We have to implement science of reading. We have to have accountability for our colleges of education, that they're teaching it properly, and that the teachers are actually implementing it in our schools because we are in a literacy crisis. The accountability systems have to be much more transparent. These A through F grading systems were a great reform. Jeb Bush was a leader on that and it helped a lot, but we've ridden that wave. We need more transparency on what curriculum is being used, how its effect on our students, whether our students are civically literate, are our schools safe, not just the one test assessment, but a myriad of assessments to help parents make good decisions about schools. You know, the, the, the Bushes, uh, George W. and Jeb, are, are not uh, necessarily MAGA favorites. Uh, so their current uh, pl place in the constellation of the party is not what it was. But anyone who cares about education, public education and just quality of education, has to take the hats off to those two guys in Texas Absolutely. and in Florida. They were they were so passionate about improving education. And and George W. called uh, called it the great civil rights issue of our time. And that's how I think of it. And, and again, I say from what I said at the top about people not being foodies, I don't know how you could think anything 
was the great civil rights issue of our time, except for our kids' education. I mean, there's other issues, but nothing should come close for anybody. And that's why I get so ticked off at these unions, because, again, they're guardians of the status quo. This is the mm -hmm. great challenge for America. Everything, our economic prosperity, our national security, our suicide rates, our drug, drug abuse rates, everything, our, our, our faith, our families, everything. Everything flows from having kids who can read and write and think, and we're just in decades and decades of neglect. Well, wow, thank you so much for your passion about the issue. That's why I left a great career in finance and have really dedicated my life and all of my resources to making sure every family in America has multiple high quality options to choose from and the agency to choose those options. And voices like yours are so important in the fight. Um, thank you for that. I'm just uh, I'm here to comment. Uh, uh, so Florida has had extraordinary education. Governors mentioned Jeb Bush, Governor DeSantis, extremely active and passionate about it. Uh, others, uh, you might be the first lady of Florida. Uh, and if you are, I'm, I know you'll be active on this issue. Uh, what will the Donaldses, plural, do to build on what Governor DeSantis has done as governor on education in Florida if you two uh, move to that slot, those slots? Well, I think our goals in Florida remain the same in ensuring that we have a really smooth and easy process for families to be able to put an education program together that's going to work best for their kids. This all rooted in our own children needing something different than the school that they were zoned for. And I looked around and I did not have options. We didn't have charter schools. They didn't have good online programs. And I thought, how many parents are out there who feel trapped? in a school that's really not working for their kids. And like my son, your son hates to go to school. That should never be the case. So school choice is number one and creating an, a marketplace of education for those competitive uh, juices to flow and ensure high quality access but accountability is of most importance as well. And making sure that parents have all the information they need to make informed decisions and that our schools are held accountable for student academic performance and putting these kids on a path to the American dream when they leave 12th grade. We cannot measure success by a 10th grade reading score or algebra one. We have to measure success by where are these children going? What is the output? Are they good citizens? Are they civically literate? Can they read and do math? And do they have a pathway to economic viability so that they can have a family, buy a house, and really be prosperous in their own lives? I probably should have set the previous question up a little bit better because uh, not everybody knows necessarily that your husband, Byron, the congressman, is uh, running for governor of Florida and is the odds on favorite to win. I saved that to the end because I, I didn't I don't I don't think it's right to to treat you like any appendage to some guy uh, mm -hmm. rather than the education expert and professional that you are. But that's the context. You may your husband may be the next governor of Florida. Will you be out doing a lot of campaigning with him for this race? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've done this together. Byron and I met when we were 19 and 21 in college. Politics was not in our future, at least not that we knew at the time. But we both have, you know, through our careers in finance and now being passionate about public service and really helping people to achieve what we'll now call the Florida dream like we have. Uh, we'll both be out there talking to people. We love grassroots work. I love talking and being with the people of Florida. I love my state. So, you know, God willing, we'll be successful and we'll be able to make a lot of these reforms and carry out some of the great successes that, of course, Governor DeSantis, Rick Scott and Jeb Bush before him were able to accomplish. Yeah. Your husband's a pretty cool guy. Uh, I just hope if he, he's governor, he watches less sports on TV <laughs> just because I, th I, I just I hope he's prepared to watch less sports because he's going to be busy. Congressman, eh, it's kind of busy, but governor is like it's a real job. So. Be prepared. You might you might have to put like the meter on the TV of how much ESPN he can watch. It's oh well, he doesn't get a, a lot in now because he's very busy. But we do have college age sons who play yeah. sports. That's really where a lot of our sports yeah. focus has been over the last few years. Yeah. He's watching more ESPN than he than you know. Just trust me. You need to ask yourself: Are you being lied to? Wall Street insists the only way to have enough money to retire is to put your life savings into a four hundred one k or an IRA and then roll the dice with it in the Wall Street casino. But if that were true, why do studies show the average American following that advice will outlive their savings by a staggering 10 years? And even the man who invented the 401k says, it's a monster that should be destroyed. Now it's time to get the truth and discover a better way to grow and protect your money. Bank on yourself is the proven retirement plan. Alternative, banks in Wall Street desperately hope you never hear about. It gives you guaranteed predictable growth and in retirement income, tax-free retirement income, built-in inflation protection, and 
much deserved and needed peace of mind. You can get a free report that reveals how you can bank on yourself and enjoy tax-free retirement income, guaranteed growth, and control of your own money. Just go to bankonyourself.com slash mark to get your free report. Again, that's bankonyourself.com slash mark. One more time, bankonyourself.com slash mark. 